very special guest back here. What's up? How's it going, everyone? Hey, thanks for letting me come by. There's no real agenda. I'm speaking tomorrow. So they said, uh, we said I said, I want an hour to see what some of the clever kids associated with MIT are coming up with. So you guys are it. And I, I, I heard you have a little design challenge. So I'm probably going to walk around and just see what you guys came up with. And then I think we might have a Q&A, some pizza. And then at the end, we'll uh, knock out some pictures. Does that sound cool? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. It's gonna slow it down? Smart. Oh, this is kind of like a pinball machine, kind of. What was the biggest challenge of all of it? Connecting everything. Connecting them. Everyone had a different idea and you wanted to connect them. And so, and what was the solution? Just lots of tape? Yeah. Lots of tape. Yeah. Duct tape helps That's usually my trick, too. Just lots of duct tape. I like it. And Team White, right? And that, that repeatability, you guys definitely have the most repeatable one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So we're going to start Q&A now with Mark. So each of the color teams, you guys have been thinking of a question to ask Mark, right? OK, we'd like to ask which video was the most expensive to make? The Glitter Bomb ones are always pretty expensive. You guys seen the Glitter Bomb bait packages, right? Because we, we end up having like 20 that go out. And so they're just all over the place. But they have to work in like really adverse environments. So like that requires a lot of people actually to like get those out and then do maintenance and engineer. And those are working on all year. So those end up being pretty expensive. Elephant toothpaste ends up being a lot. Just the chemicals alone are like as much as a fancy car. Uh, and you kind of get one shot at it. Um, and so, yeah, my, my videos aren't as much as Mr. Beast's video, uh, Mr. Beast's videos, but sometimes they kind of approach. Good question, Blue Team. Thank you, Blue Team. Thank you. All right, can we pass the microphone on over to Pink Team? Let's hear from you guys next. Which video was your favorite to make? Favorite? Um, I mean, the one I did about NASA was cool, uh, you know, like talking about what it was felt like to like build the rover for, you know, seven years and having it land. That's like one really means a lot to me. Um, I think like the most like a high watermark for me is when we did like the second elephant toothpaste where it like ruptured out the bottom. There was this kid Fletcher who had like brain cancer and we, we brought him out and it was a total surprise. And it was just like the world's greatest birthday. We gave him a couple world records. And that was just like a lovely, wholesome thing to, um, I don't know. It just like the end of that day, it was so much work. We didn't think we'd pull it off. And to actually more or less have it work and have that experience for Fletcher was just, it felt really, really awesome. And it's about failure too, because it's like, we designed this thing, we had it all solved. Pfft, the big explosion happens and it comes out the bottom. <laughs> Basically, we didn't, we didn't realize there was so much pressure would lift this two ton massive flask into the air. Um, we just didn't consider that. So for the next year, of course, we made the 10 ton steel version and that one worked, so. <laughs> yeah, all these kids are definitely learning about having their designs fail and having to remake them. I love that, I love that. And that's something I was so happy to hear as we came around, you guys were just testing often and early, fail, tweak, fail, tweak. That's how you, that's how you make these things that's how you make a glitter bomb, and that's how you put a rover on Mars. It's always the same process. Uh, so why did you decide to invest in engineering? Oh, invest. Interesting word choice there. Was that like an, in an intentional word choice? I don't know. No okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure like, how I should handle that. because like, oh, good, good, uh, good verb. Uh, I was telling these guys over here, um, I, I always was kind of inclined. My dad's actually here today in the blue uh, sweatshirt there. And uh, he'll tell you, like, as a kid, I was, A, I was kind of always, like, mischievous and pulling pranks. There was a few times you had to tell me, all right, you just need to start getting serious about life, Mark. <laughs> uh, but it turns out he was wrong. I'm still, you know. <laughs> uh, and then also, you know, I always like tinkering with stuff, building random contraptions. But then when I took high school physics, it was like, ooh, this tickles a certain part of my brain where it's like, you know, you could explain the world in math and equations, where, you know, you can 
You could drop a rock off a building. I know exactly how many seconds to hit the ground. And by the way, if I speak a different language, if I, if, if from a different culture, I get the same answer. If somehow everything went away tomorrow, and then 50 years ago, or 1,000 years where everything was reinvented, it would come back to the same answer. So it's just like engineering and science is like a crystal ball, but just a crystal ball that actually works, where you can like understand the world around you, but then make predictions about the future that can help you, you know, get robots to Mars, or like we were just seeing in a lab here, you know, fix someone's foot who's had, you know, an amputee so they can walk again. And by the way, even if you're, let's say you're gonna be a vet or a firefighter, so we started like this toy company, Crunch Labs, right? And on the side of the box, because it's so important to me, it says, think like an engineer. And think like an engineer means you think critically, right? And you're not a failure failure, you know that process. And if you think like that, uh, you know, you're resilient in, in the process of, of learning and experimenting. And if you think like that, that makes you a better vet. That makes you a better firefighter. That makes you a better piano practice or a soccer player because you know what it takes to get better at a thing, and it's a, it's a process of trial and error. So even if you don't become an engineer and you want to be a, a composer, composers that think like engineers, I would argue, are better composers for it. What's your favorite part about science? I like that science can be wrong, and it's like, it's like you're, you're trying to, you're doing your best to answer these tough questions, and sometimes it's risky, and sometimes you have a theory that turns out being wrong, but I love that the way something goes from like theory to fact is like you put it in the ring, and you tack it from all sides, you have a hypothesis, and like the whole scientific method is you're, like, you're trying to disprove this hypothesis, like how cool is that? You have a guess, and the way to say that it's right is you attack it from every single angle, and if at the end of that, it still is like standing, then that's a pretty good idea, right? So I, I, I love that that's the whole process on what it's built around. Like if, if there was someone who's like, oh, I'm the best boxer in the world, it's like, okay, cool, how many times you fought? They're like, none. It's like, well, I don't really think that's true. Until you get in the ring, you've competed against people and other people who are really good, then you earn that title. It's like, that's what science is for ideas. It's like the, the heavyweight title winners of these ideas. And sometimes they don't work out, but the fact that you have like the courage to try new things and poke and, 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 and that's just totally part of the process, I think that's, that's my favorite part about science. How did you come up with the names of your squirrels? Now that is a, that's a hard hitting question right there. <laughs> Fat Gus should be kind of obvious. Uh, <laughs> uh, P-H-A-T, Gus, as you remember in the first video, um, uh, Fat Gus was the most rotund of all the squirrels um, until I learned out that if you see that they have nipples, that means they're pregnant, which is when I changed my tone altogether, and it was a very, yeah, that was a tricky one. Um, and then we have Rick and Marty. I just thought that was cool from Rick and Morty. And then Frank, I just think it's a funny name. So <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. <laughs> and Fat Tail, the rat, in the most recent one, he was the villain, Fat Tail, yeah. Um, good question. Uh, hi, my name is Charles, and I really like your videos, but I'm always wanting to know more about how the mechanism works, mm -hmm. how the design process went. Would you ever consider making some sort of other form to accompany those more like entertaining videos about specifically how those, uh, like a, the, the compressed air cannon for the wiffle ball yeah. home plate or the w yeah, whatever yeah. Uh, machines work. So you, uh, someone like me could, could really dig in and learn more about how the, the machines. Yeah, that's a really good question. And you're not the first to ask it. And yeah, it's like, cause I have to, right? Cause like, there's a lot of channels that go into like technical builds for things like an air cannon. But it's like, um, my goal with my videos is kind of hide the vegetables, right? So it's like, I get you in with like the cool thumbnail 15 ton jello pool and you're like, what? And then you, you come in and before you know it, you're learning about chemistry and you know, the scientific method. And so there's, a, there's an art form to like making a topic broadly applicable enough, making the video be really flowy and punchy that someone who's not even interested in engineering wants to watch it, right? Which I think you agree with that and that's a good way to do it. Now, can I then take that and make a, a second you know, channel, and my philosophy on that is like, I could, it would take resources and time, and it's like, I'd, truthfully, I'd rather 
take that same amount of time and make another video that will reach another large audience, right? Because everything, there's opportunity costs for everything, right? Because there's lots of channels out there. Like if you want to know how to make a mechanism that I do, there's a thousand channels that go into those details, right? So I feel like I like getting people like, getting, making it a little itchy where they're like, oh, how did he do that? And now you are taking it on by yourself to like really try and find the answers because the answers are out there, you know? Um, so that's kind of my philosophy. I'm not opposed to it. It's just an opportunity cost thing. And I'd rather just swing for the fences on another big video that might catch a kid who now has a love of engineering that he didn't know they had before, right, or she. So that's my philosophy. It's a great suggestion. If I, as soon as I clone myself, then I'm doing it. What's uh, your favorite city that you visited? Mm, favorite, so, so I was just in Rwanda. Um, and I made a video about zip lines, so it's like these drones that deliver blood through the air. Um, and I was blown away by the country of Rwanda where, you know, they had this genocide 20 years ago, which is such a terrible moment, but the way they've rallied as a country, it was super clean, it was super safe. I didn't put this in the video, but at one point I left my phone and wallet next to this like busy road, and, uh, and I went back, you know, an hour later or something, it was just still there. Um, and just everyone was super friendly. It was just a really, and technologically, they're really you know, advanced. So that was like pretty mind blown, right? In the heart of Africa. Plus we got to see some uh, mountain gorillas and there's only like a thousand or something in the world. We saw them in the wild. So uh, internationally, I'd say Kigali in Rwanda is my favorite place I've visited so far. What was the video? Like the video that made you like famous at the beginning of your channel? My first ever video is like, this Halloween costume where I had like an iPad in front and iPad in back. And if you do a FaceTime video chat, because the camera in the front shows what's on the back, it looks like you have a hole in your body. So that was like my Halloween costume. And I took it to the party and people were like thinking that was cool. I was like, oh, I should upload this to the internet because my, my life dream was to be featured on Gizmodo, which is like some tech website, which it's hilarious that none of you kids probably have no, any idea what it is. <laughs> uh, I really was dreaming big back in the day. <laughs> so I did get featured on Gizmodo, and the video kind of blew up. It got like a million views, in, or two million views in the first few days. And it's like on the internet, a front page of all the internet sites. And I was like, well, that's a cool feeling. I have more ideas. So truly from then, I've done one video a month, more or less, for about a decade. Um, but what I love about that video is you should go back and watch it, and you should, it shows sort of a growth mindset and just like how you can get better at something over time. Because when you watch the video, I'm like, so here's an idea for like a costume. Like you can hardly hear me. You know, I don't have eye contact with the camera. You know, the story's not great. But eventually over time you get better and you can see that progression happening. Sometimes you forget, I mean you guys right now, depending on what you graded in, if you're doing algebra or calculus, or just learning long division, like you had to learn a lot to get to that point. We kind of discount all the work you've done up to a certain point. So it's very an obvious thing, specifically on YouTubers, to kind of see that. And so, you know, I went from that to now, you know, in a video where it's like, you know, this is a contest at MIT, right? Yeah, that very, <laughs> the cadence, right? So you develop a voice that works well. What's your favorite arcade game and have you made a robot for it? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you're giving me ideas. It's like as soon as you said that, all these neurons started firing. <laughs> like, wait a second, could we do this? <laughs> um, I mean, Super Mario Brothers is like the old school classic. I'm talking about it tomorrow in my speech here, um, or my, the talk I'm doing. Um, but Street Fighter II, probably, on Super Nintendo. Do you know that game? Um, played a lot of that in college. I like Mario Kart, kind of the classics. I'm not like a huge gamer. Right now, I'm a Rocket League. Do you guys play Rocket League? Anyone in here? I'm a platoon. Not a big deal, you guys. Not a big deal. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> You're looking at a platoon. Um, I play that with like a couple of my buddies, a, um, like once or twice a week. A bunch of 40-year-old dudes playing video games, and it's like it's such a delightful part of my week. So <laughs> that's kind of the only gaming I do now, though. So do you like to game a lot? What's your favorite game? Uh, I think it might be uh, Mario Kart. Yeah, Mario Kart, that's good. We are doing, uh, for Crunch Labs, we are making that in Roblox right now. 
So you can come, this is actually cool. There's like this program called Kerbal Space Program where you like build a rocket, you send it to space. Like for adults, you play it in college. We're doing something called Build a Rocket where within Crunch Labs, you're gonna make a, make a rocket. You have to launch it out of Crunch Labs and see how far it can go. So that's gonna actually be pretty fun. Hi, my name is Amelia, and um, what was your favorite invention or like thing that you did on your YouTube channel? Um, favorite invention or thing we did? Um, uh, the robot. We made this field goal kicking robot that could like kick a field goal like 110 yards, you know, and dominated the world's best field goal kicker. And that one, it's just spring powered. It has like these six like super industrial strength strings that we pull back with a winch. Um, I feel like that one we keep getting good use out of because we'll put like watermelons in front of it and like Legos and cool stuff and then just like hit stuff and chop stuff with ax feet. And that one's been really fun to just like continually, a lot of the videos we do, like automatic, the automatic bullseye dartboard. It's like, it takes a lot of cameras and setups to get it working just right. You film the video, and then it's like, because it's such a thing to set it up, you kind of like don't reset it up. But the field goal kicking robot has been great. We keep getting a lot of use out of it because we can just like pull it out of the museum at Crunch Labs and kick something else with it, so. Hi, my name is Jeremiah, and what was your favorite squirrel video? Oh, what was my favorite? So that's a funny story. So the <laughs> this was like right at the beginning of the pandemic, right? And I was like laying in bed and I heard a squirrel on my roof. And I'm like, these are just crafty characters. I was like, what if I did like man versus squirrel? And so the squirrel idea was born. And so I'm, it, was, it was a bit of a left turn for my channel, right? Like instead of a build, it's like I'm trying to outwit these like furry mammals in my backyard. And so we released the video and you get a ranking on YouTube where it says like, this video is ranked number one out of your last 10 or number five out of your last 10. And I released that video, and it was number 10 out of 10, which is not what you want. Not only that, it was like four times worse than my, my least watched video in like the first eight hours. And I was like, this is it? I killed my channel. <laughs> like, what was I thinking? Why did I go to war with these rodents? <laughs> uh, and then, so thankfully, because my channel is like, I know some people at YouTube now, so I texted the dude who like runs the algorithm. And I was like, hey, uh, uh, what the heck, man? I didn't think this was so bad. And he's like, uh, hold on. He's like, checks and stuff, and he gets back. He's like, oh, yeah, YouTube's, YouTube's down. Thanks for the heads up. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I shouldn't be like your canary in the coal. I feel like you should have tools to know, like, the number two search platform in the whole world is, like, broken. Uh, so it was, like, apparently new videos. There was some computer that had shut down that, therefore, wasn't promoting new videos. And so as soon as they fixed it, then like, you know, the views came back. But it was a, generally I have a pretty gut feel. Like if I just want to do a video, I do it, which is kind of good to be in that position. Like I just made a, a bed bugs fascinate me and I really wanted to make a video about them for a long time. And that's not necessarily what you consider like a banger video, but it's like, oh, I could just make the video because I find it interesting. And so Squirrels was one of those things. I was like, I feel like this is a cool video, but it was like so far removed below that, I was really thinking the channel was done, but yeah. Well, let's thank Mark and Summer also for the Q&A.